Hello and welcome to a review on the Sony Xperia E3. So how does Sony's budget phone compare with the rest? I liked the look of the Xperia. It has a flat design made out of plastic, but it has a welcome rubbery feel. The front of the device has a 4.5 inch screen. The screen itself is vibrant and dynamic, but the resolution is rather poor, as it's only 480 by 854 pixels. I would have rather have seen a 720p display, but it's not a big problem. The display is also scratch resistant thanks to the tempered glass. Also on the front of the screen you may notice is the huge bezels. It's great that it has an omni balanced look but the bezels on the top and the bottom I feel are unnecessarily big. One of the cooler things to make it over from the larger phones is the corner protection. This isn't a metal fern, but it has the same nylon covers to keep it from being damaged through drops. I don't like the lock button however, it's aluminium but it looks out of place with the rest of the design of the fern. Inside is a quad core CPU. It's not a powerhouse of a device, but navigating around is smooth and fluid. You can still play games on the Sony phone, but it certainly doesn't match the speed and graphics of more powerful phones. It runs Android KitKat with Sony skin over it. I was surprised because it's a speedy and silky operating system. Sony doesn't install a million bloatware apps, and the apps that are installed are quite useful. Track ID and its widgets will work out what songs are playing, and if you're into the most recent tracks and movies, then there's a beautiful application which shows you all that news. The Walkman app is just as beautiful. You can stream music online as well as listen to your own, which can be stored on the device. One of the things that does bother me is that Sony doesn't seem to know what colour scheme they're going for. Some apps open with a light colour scheme and yet others open it with a dark colour scheme. I just wish there was a bit more consistency. Moving on to cameras. The front camera, well it's rather poor, with only a Fiji resolution which is less than a megapixel. On the back is a 5 megapixel shooter with an LED flash. The photos it takes are ok, not terrible but acceptable. For a phone with a decent price tag I can forgive the average camera. If I'm being picky then the low light performance is kind of rubbish. But the camera itself is pretty good, it has lots of features including panorama and HDR. There's also a removable back cover which you'll discover the micro sim card and the SD card which coincidentally you will want to invest in because the E3 only has 4GB of internal storage which I filled up pretty much instantly. You can't remove the battery though because it's bolted in. You might not even need to though because the battery life was pretty impressive. Sony gifts you with 2330mA and along with software improvements that means that you should be able to last most of the day. Sony have kept some of the design elements from the premium lineup, but unfortunately the E3 doesn't receive waterproofing. It is, however, Sony's cheapest 4G enabled smartphone. The Sony Xperia E3 is definitely not a bad phone. It's well built with a nice Sony skin on top of Android. It has a disappointing camera bundle, but overall I have to say the E3 gets my recommendation. That's it for the review, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later, bye bye.